This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends, presenting yet another case of trauma. This is a 35-year-old patient who is a stone cutter by profession, who has already lost one eye because of a similar stone injury in the past. Now he is presenting with a stone injury to the only seeing eye. And this is how the clinical picture looks like. His vision is just perception of light, the antechamber is full of blood and there is obvious corneoscleral tear with an iris prolapse. He is presenting to a hospital two days after the injury. Well, the situation is quite alarming. Luckily for us, the B-scan ultrasound did not reveal any pathology in the posi segment and there is no retained intraocular foreign body. In this situation, my primary goal was to restore the integrity of the globe, perform the corneoscleral tear repair and excise the prolapsed iris and then reassess the situation. At this point, I don't have a clue on the status of the crystalline lens. Now, moving on to the surgery. The most important consideration again would be to use the right type of anesthesia. In such situations, my preferred method is always the posterior subtenance. And this is being done before draping. After numbing the inferior bulbar conjunctiva, a small peritum is created at the inferior middle quadrant. And using a 23G cannula, 1 ml of lignocaine is placed in the posterior subtenance space. A 5% betadine drops is put over the wound and it is washed thoroughly. So by this type of anesthesia, we don't increase intraoperative pressure and it's ideal for such trauma cases. The eye is then painted and draped. I begin by making a paracentesis and viscoelastic is placed inside the eye. Before excising the prolapsed iris, I'm scraping the epithelium which would have grown over the iris in the corneal tissue. This will help me in identifying the corneal edge and prevent me from cutting out any corneal tissue uh, which is so critical to get good approximation of the uh, closure of the tear. After abscising the iris, the next important thing is to explore the length of the scleral wound that is to assess the length of the scleral end of the tear. I am doing a conjunctival peritomy to visualize the distal end of the scleral tear. Before beginning to suture, I am using cohesive OVD to ensure that the oval tissue is pushed back from the tear and this will help me in avoiding the uveal tissue being engaged in the suture bite. I am using 10 O nylon, placing my first suture in the center of the tear to ensure good approximation. The suture bite needs to be deep and sufficiently wide to ensure a secure apposition of the tone ends. The suture knot is tied two times, then the knot is buried into the corneal stroma. After the central suture is placed, similar interrupted tenonylon sutures are placed on either side of the central suture and the knots are then subsequently buried. Also, I am using cohesive OVD to keep the oval tissue out of the suture track. I am using two sutures to close the scleral end as well. Once the entire length of the tissue is approximated, I notice that the central suture has become a little bit loose. I cut it out and put in a fresh suture. At this point, the wound looks clean and nicely opposed. Now, I want to try and remove the OVD and also the blood clot if possible. But I need to remind myself that this patient is phakic. I don't know the status of the lens at present, but I need to ensure that my maneuvers should be as minimal and as careful as possible. I am going in with my bimanual cannula and trying to gently aspirate the OVD along with the blood clot. But at this point, it's clear that the thick membrane, probably the clot itself, is refusing to be aspirated out. And this is a tricky situation. Well, one way is to use a vitreous cutter to cut and aspirate the membrane and the clot. But I think it might be too risky considering the crystalline lens is present just behind the, this clot. So why not try with the forceps? And while doing this maneuver, I just get a small peek at the underlying lens and it looked crystalline and perfectly healthy to me. So to ensure minimal manipulation, I go back and inject a little bit of OVD into the eye, make the chamber deep and I'm using a bent forceps to grasp the blood clot 
and gently tease out the blood clot and i'm surprised by you know how easily i could just pull it out i could manage to remove 3/4 of the blood clot out easily and i plan to leave the inferior clot as it is because i don't want to manipulate any further because looking at the underlying a clear lens well the good news was that the crystalline lens looked perfectly healthy i turn on the retro illumination mode and i'm happy to see a very healthy red glow the ovd is now gently removed the anti chamber is formed with bss and the conjunctiva is closed using 8 o vicral sutures this is how the the eye looks the next day the patient is very happy and extremely grateful he has 618 vision there is still some blood clot in the inferior quadrant well during subsequent visits he continues to do well and in his last checkup we saw it is retina the retina was normal well going back this case reminds us that the trauma case may look hopeless at presentation but we need to remind ourselves that timely intervention with proper technique and a little bit of luck we can save many such eyes and provide more than useful vision to them this case also reminds us of the fact that these one eyed patients are more vulnerable for trauma to the seeing eye uh, probably because of the limited field of uh, view they have so it becomes more important for us to counsel all these one eyed patients and motivate them to wear protective glasses during the daily activity by doing so i think we can prevent many of these one eyed patients from sustaining trauma to their only seeing eye thank you for watching and hope this helps